Operant conditioning part two, here we go. What is operant conditioning? Well, it's a type of learning. We're in the learning section, right? It's a type of learning that, that occurs when there's reinforcement or punishment. So it refers to anything that has to do with reinforcement or punishment. You learn to operate, operant, operate based on the environment, based on what's happening around you. So if the environment's rewarding, you do it more often. When it's not, you do it less, which is the, actually the law of effect. The law of effect says if something you get rewarded for doing something, you're going to do it more often. You get punished for doing something, you're going to do it less. Pretty self-evident. And shaping is where you would take um, slowly reinforce or punish a behavior in order to change it. So for instance, you teaching a dog to play dead would be a form of shaping. You, you can't just teach the dog, okay, play dead and show it how to do it and expect it to do it. You're going to teach the dog first maybe to, to sit and then maybe to put one hand up and then maybe to put two paws up. And then, you know, little by little, you're going to reinforce each one of those behaviors until the dog's got the whole trick down and can do it all for you all at once. A uh, little difference between operant conditioning and what we just talked about in the first part, classical conditioning, is that classical conditioning focuses on whether one stimulus predicts another cause or of a response. So it's whether one stimulus and operant conditioning is when uh, organisms associate their actions with a consequence. So the key here is consequences, these things right here. Um, so there we go. Um, so let's talk first about reinforcers. Now here's some some things we gotta get clear here. Positive and negative don't connotate any sort of value in psychology. So positive doesn't mean good, negative doesn't mean bad. Positive means you're adding something, negative means you're subtracting something, you're taking away something. So positive means there's gonna be, there's gonna be positive reinforcers and we're gonna see in a bit positive punishment. There's gonna be negative reinforcers and as we're gonna see in a bit, negative punishment. Okay, so those are the two uh, Two things. So positive just means you're adding something, which is hard, which is easy for us to remember, but negative just means we're taking something away. It doesn't mean it's good or bad. Reinforcer just means that you're going to do it more often. It encourages the behavior. So reinforcer means you're going to encourage the particular behavior. So even though it says negative reinforcement, we're going to encourage this behavior. So here's some examples. An example of a positive reinforcer would be um, anything where you add something when somebody does an action. So for instance, if somebody um, says something funny, you smile, right? Well, people like to see other people smile, so they do it more often because that, of that. Or if you get a good grade, you get uh, a dollar or some, or some money from your parents, all right? So for getting good grades, that's a positive reinforcement. You're getting something uh, and your actions, so you're getting something here, and you're going to do it more often, which means it's a reinforcer. Okay, so that's positive reinforcement. Now, negative reinforcement means you're going to take something away, and what you're going to take away is usually an aversive stimulus. Or an aversive stimulus is something that you don't like. So, a couple examples of negative reinforcers that ding, 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 ding sound when you don't have your seatbelt on when you're in the car, that ding, ding, ding sounds is aversive. Okay. All right, and so we're going to reverse of ding, ding, right? So we're going to take that negative, take something away. So we're going to take that aversive stimulus away by plugging in your seatbelt, right? Plug in belt. And then that behavior is now going to be reinforced. You're going to do it more often. You're going to plug in your belt more often because you are don't want to hear that ding, ding, ding sound. All right, so you take something away. And the behavior is reinforced, which means you do it more often. You're going to plug in your seatbelt. Now, there's two types of uh, reinforcers, primary and secondary. Primary basically fulfill some sort of biological need. So uh, your basic needs, your need for food, water, those, those basic types of things. Um, secondary reinforcers, sometimes called conditioned reinforcers, are um, things that don't require a don't uh, satisfy biological need, but they, so for instance, a, a toy, so if I give you a toy for being a good boy or girl, that's a secondary reinforcer. Um, 
If I give you praise, that's also a secondary reinforcer, right? It doesn't fulfill a biological need, but it encourages the behavior nonetheless. Okay, so moving on, there's a couple of things. Continuous reinforcement means it's going to happen over and over, never stop. So every time you do the action, you're going to get reinforced for it. This uh, hardly ever occurs in the real world. Uh, every time you're trying to sell something, a salesman tries to sell something, he doesn't always get somebody to say yes. So continuous reinforcement very, very rarely occurs, right? Intermittent or partial reinforcement means it occurs intermittently, either after a specific period of time or a specific number of times, which leads us over here to these uh, ratio or reward schedules. So there's fixed and variable, as you'll see here. Fixed means it's after a certain number or certain amount. So we know, we should, so, so, and ratio means number. Ratio means number and interval means time, okay? So fixed ratio means a certain number. So uh, let's say every five times you raise your hand to speak to talk in class, I give you a cookie, right? So we're a second grade teacher, the kid's just talking all over the place. So I put them on a fixed ratio reinforcement schedule. So every five times he raises his hand, I give him a cookie, right? That's a fixed ratio. Variable ratio would be so remember, ratio means a certain number of times. Variable ratio would mean I wouldn't tell the student or the student wouldn't know how many numbers of times it would be till I would give him a cookie. It'd be kind of almost random. It'd be after any, any number of times. So it might be after five times one time. It might be after three times another. It might be after eight times another. And so you never really know what you're going to get. And so by not knowing, this tends to be a little bit stronger because you don't know when you're going to be getting it, and so you're constantly doing it, hoping that you're going to receive that reinforcement. Fixed interval would mean every, so if you stay quiet for 10 minutes, uh, I will, you know, give you an extra minute at recess. So again, fixed time, so fixed means you know exactly what it is, interval means time, so fixed interval schedule, you know exactly how long you need to do something. Variable interval schedule, is you don't know how long you have to do it, but you have to be doing the behavior when that time comes up. So for instance, if I said, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing after 30 minutes, but I don't tell you that, but in my head, I can say after 30 minutes and, I'm, and I look up after 30 minutes and you're doing it, then I'll, re, I'll reinforce you. So you don't know. So the key with that, with the, um, with any of these, uh, with either of the, of the variables, is that you're doing the behavior when the time's up or when the amount is up. And uh, that's, you don't know when that's going to be. So hopefully the idea is that, that, that by being variable, you're going to continue doing it more often because you don't ever know when it's going to happen. Whereas if you knew it was a fixed ratio, if I said if the fifth time you raise your hand, you know, I might do it less, less, less. Oh, fifth time's coming up and I'll do it more. Or fi uh, fixed interval, you know, after 10 minutes, I'm going to see if you're sitting quietly. So I might be loud, 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 loud. Okay, oh, 10 minutes is coming up, so I'm really quiet now until you come, so it's it can change. All right, um, now punishments. There's positive punishment and negative punishment. Remember, back from the reinforcement, positive just means you're adding something, negative means you're taking something away. Punishment means you don't, you want to, uh, excuse me, you want to decrease the behavior. All right, so a punishment means you want to decrease the behavior. Reinforcement, you want to increase the behavior, Punishment, you want to decrease your behavior. Positive punishment, easy spanking. You're adding an adversive stimulus. You're adding pain, right? They don't want that to happen, so hopefully they're going to stop. So positive punishment, decrease the behavior. Negative punishment, again, negative, you're taking something away. So negative punishment, I'm going to uh, put you in a timeout. I'm taking away your playtime, right? That's a timeout. I'm taking something away. Negative punishment, I take away your car, right? This is negative because I'm taking something away. It's punishment because hopefully by taking that away, you're going to decrease that behavior. So punishment uh, tries to decrease behavior by either adding an adversive stimulus or taking away something to make it more adversive. All right, punishments, uh, research shows, tends to work less well than reinforcement. Um, so we try to reinforce the good behaviors and 
by reinforcing the good behaviors, that means there's less time to do bad behaviors, and that's usually more effective. Um, last four terms, we have latent learning. Latent learning means you learn something maybe from watching, from observation. Maybe you watched your parents or you watched somebody on TV, and you don't show it till later. You show it later when necessary or when, when needed. So maybe... I don't know, you're, you know how you're to wash the dishes correctly, but you never actually showed that you had to wash the dishes collect correctly until you actually needed to do it yourself. So your parents were gone, there was no, and you needed to wash your dishes, so you had to actually go do it yourself. Uh, but you realize, well, I actually know how to do this. So that's, that'd be late learning. Late means just after a period of time. So you show it later. Two types of motivation. So why do we do things? Intrinsic motivation is you are motivated to do it because it's inherently pleasing to you because you just inherently enjoy doing it. Um, extrinsic motivation means you do it because either something else outside of you is rewarding you or punishing you. So extrinsic motivation me might mean you'd be getting money, right? Or extrinsic, that would be uh, reinforcement, right? That would actually be a secondary or conditioned reinforcement. Reinforcement. Or maybe uh, if you don't do this, I'm going to take away your car, right? That would be uh, a punishment that I would be extrinsically motivated to do it. If you don't study, you're going to get a bad grade rather than if you do study, you're going <clears> to, <throat> if it be intrinsically motivated, I'm going to study because I enjoy the subject. I want to learn more. Extrinsic motivation would be I'm going to study because I'm going to get a bad grade if I don't. And then this last term is instinctive drift basically means all this learning, all this rewards and punishments, animals especially, and humans, we're, we're generally going to go back to what we are just biologically meant to do. So whatever we're biologically, you know, um, pre-wired, for lack of a better term, I don't know if you can see that, let me write it over here, pre-wired, for lack of a better term, uh, we're biologically pre-wired. So for instance, a whale like these orca whales at SeaWorld, right? One of them had turned on one of the trainers and attacked and then killed the dude, you know, a few years back. The whale, although it was trained really, really well, had this instinctive drift and eventually went back to just in, in sometimes in spurts, you don't ever know when it's going to happen. And eventually went back and turned back into uh, nature for this split second or this small period of time and uh, ended up killing the dude. So uh, instinctive drift means that even though you can learn things and you can be conditioned to do things, you are eventually you know start drifting back every once in a while to what uh, you know what your core is, and so that is operant conditioning. Thanks.